Hey team, today I'm gonna to walk you through building a custom hook and publishing it to NPM. I'm Colby Fayok, and if this is your first time here, make sure you subscribe below to get future updates. For this walkthrough, I'm gonna walk you through recreating Use Place Cage. Use Place Cage is a simple but silly and fun hook that I made to get placeholder images of Nick Cage. It uses a placeholder image service called Place Cage, which using this URL pattern, you can generate images of Nick Cage that you can use to placehold on your website. And if Nick Cage isn't your thing, you can also use Phil Murray or placeholder.com or really anything that is an image placeholder service. So to get started, we're going to use this starter template I created for React Hooks. The hope is that this takes away some of the painful bits so we can get productive right away with our custom hook. So in our terminal, once we're in our code directory, we can run git clone the git URL address and then use my custom hook. And for there, you want to type in whatever the directory name is for your hook. And once the clone is finished, let's navigate to that hook. Next, we want to run yarn install. And once it's installed, we can run yarn setup. This is going to give us a series of questions that we can answer to custom tailor our project just for us. So for author name, I'm going to put in my name. For the hook name, we want to use a camel case form. So I'm going to use use place page. And for the snake case form, I want to do use place cage, hit enter, and it's going to go through and set up the hook for us for our name. Once it's done, we can open up our code editor and we can see a few things. We see use place cage, which is our hook directory, example, which is our example directory, and these will all work together to help us provide our package for our hook. So when we're ready to actually modify our hook, we can go to source, use placecage.js, and we can clear out the code in there, which is just placeholder to get things started. For our hook, we're going to use a couple constants. So we're going to use place cage host, which is basically the URL of the service, and then a few types, which we have calm, gray, crazy, and gif, which is just the different types of images that the services actually return. And we're going to set the default type to calm and just an error so that we can easily track the errors that we send if something bad happens. Next, for the meat of the hook, we're going to paste in this function called generate cage. What this function does is take in a group of settings, which can be structured to different things like type, width, and height, which are just settings for the image service. We're going to check and see if the type that we pass in is valid and push it to our configure if it is. Push also our width and height, and then join those together with a slash that basically creates our URL that will pass back for a return value. And if we were to paste this all in our browser and see if it works, we can hit the console log and see that we're getting those two image values. So finally, so we can use this generate cage function in our hook, we're going to return that value and pass in the settings object, which is getting passed into the hook right here. And we'll return that value to the person using the hook. Then we're going to run yarn develop, which does two things. It creates a watch service for the hook itself, which will compile with Babel, but it also create a Next.js server, which we're going to use for our example page. So once we're ready, let's hit save, and then we can navigate over to our example page where we can see that we're already importing that hook. If you look at the hook instance though, we're actually not using it correctly. So what we're gonna do is take out this message and replace it with cage, but we're also gonna change the hook settings. We're gonna pass in that same object I did before in the console log. So we're gonna request a GIF with the size of 500 by 500, and we're gonna request two of them. The only other thing we wanna do is remove that instance of message from the actual page. Otherwise, we're gonna get an error. So let's just remove that for now and hit save. And then let's also console log out the cage variable. And in our terminal, we're going to see the server URL, which is on the port 3000. And if we open that up, we can see our demo page, but we can also see that console log where we see those two array values. So now that our demo is working, let's actually update this page so we can show the output. So for the first thing, let's copy these hook settings. And we can replace the actual example in the bottom. Clean up those tabs, go back up, grab that cage instance and remove the console log, replace that in the example. We can check our browser and see that that updated. Additionally, what we can do to show the output of cage, we can go into that paragraph where we removed message and then do JSON stringify our cage value save and open back up our browser, we now see that value in the output. And since the whole point of this is to show the images, I'm also going to create another little section where we can take the cage, map it out, pull in our image as each instance with an index, and we're going to include an image, e, i, which is just the index, so it's unique, and then our source is going to be that image value, close that tag, hit save, open up the page, and then we see our images in all their Nick Cage glory. So the last thing we want to do is actually build and compile this out. So the way I set this up 
it's actually going to pre-compile this for us when we actually go to build and publish the npm package. So we don't necessarily need to do that, but if we run yarn build, we can still see what that's going to look like. Once it's done, we can see our out directory, which now includes our static site, which is our example page, but then we can also see in our directory, our use place cage hook and our index, which imports that file. So now that that's built, the last thing we want to do is actually publish this out. Before you publish to NPM, the only thing you want to make sure you do is have an actual account. We'll use that to log in to publish our package. So if you're not logged in already, let's use NPM login to log into NPM. And once you're logged in, we're going to want to CD into our hook directory. And we're going to run NPM publish, which it'll go and do its thing. So for me, I'm getting a 403. That's because I already have this package published to NPM in another repository. So if you're running this with a unique name, that should be successful. And just as an example, for our actual use place page package, I'm going to run npm publish. It's going to compile out just the same as our other one did, and it will successfully publish. The last thing you want to do with your page is build that example page. So I recommend definitely going through, updating the name if you want, description, your personal URLs, and a little bit of an how to use. The nice thing about this starter is it pulls a lot of it in from the packages.json. So if we put our name and we make sure our email and URL are filled out, description, that should all get pulled in automatically to that example page. So now if you follow along with me, you should now have a custom hook and have it published to NPM. Your next step should be taking that example site and take that static file, and add it to any kind of static hosting like Netlify or Zite. For more info about hooks, definitely check the description for more links. If you like this video, make sure you give it a thumbs up and subscribe for future updates. Thanks for watching.